the letter also says that you would not commit uh, to being fair to litigants before you, notably members of the LGBTQ community. Can you speak to that? Did you, did you say that you wouldn't be fair to members of the LGBT community? Senator, I, that, was, um, that was the part of the letter. I did not say that. I apologize. It's all right. I'm sorry. No, I did not say that. I do not believe that. It is a fundamental belief of mine that all people are created in the image of God. They should all be treated with dignity and respect. Senator. Can you commit to, today to, to this committee that you will treat, if, if confirmed, that you would treat every litigant who, who came before you with respect and with dignity? Absolutely, Senator. I would not have allowed myself to be nominated for this position if I did not think I could do that. Including members of the LGBT community and, and any other community that has been historically disadvantaged in this country? Absolutely, Senator. This is Lawrence Van Dyke, Trump's latest federal appeals court nominee to be rated not qualified for the judicial branch by the American Bar Association, or ABA. And conservatives, obviously, have pointed not to the nominee, but the ABA as flawed, claiming that the group has been biased against conservatives for decades. Now, I'm just going to throw this out there. Maybe, just maybe, when a group that's been in existence for almost 150 years, whose job is to rate judicial nominees and has been the standard bearer for decades, says the nominee isn't qualified qualified, it might just be the nominee's fault. Of course, the right will never admit that because they'd rather pretend that everything is a grand conspiracy against them as part of their eternal victim complex than to ever concede that Trump nominated an unfit judge. Because as we know, Trump only hires the best people, so long as they can manage to stay out of prison. By the way, this rating wasn't some arbitrary liberal attack. It came after the ABA conducted 60 interviews, and it was during those interviews that concerns were raised as to whether Van Dyke would be, quote, fair to persons who are gay, lesbian, or otherwise part of the LGBT community. The letter by the ABA would go on to offer a blistering critique of Trump's nominee, stating, Mr. Van Dyke's accomplishments are offset by the assessments of interviewees that Mr. Van Dyke is arrogant, lazy, an ideologue, and lacking in knowledge of the day-to-day practice, including procedural rules. There was a theme that the nominee lacks humility, has an entitlement temperament, does not have an open mind, and does not always have a commitment to being candid and truthful. Now, who else might that possibly remind you of? I should note, too, that this isn't Trump's first judicial nominee to be rated not qualified by the ABA. In total, Trump has put forward nine nominees with this rating, five of whom have been confirmed by the Republican-led Senate, and two of whom, Van Dyke included, are currently pending. But this isn't just on Trump, although he clearly shoulders the blame for nominating unqualified judges in the first place. Confirmation also takes a majority of senators who are literally being told that the nominees are not qualified to do their jobs. And yet the fact that they are still managing to get confirmed is proof that Republicans care only about ideology, even if it means trashing the judiciary to get there. I should also mention, for no particular reason, that Barack Obama put forward all of zero judicial nominees with a not qualified rating. Call him old fashioned, but I guess he figured it'd be a good idea to put judges on the bench who know how to be judges. And watching Republicans crying until they get their way has become a recurring theme of the Trump era. We saw this from Trump's Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, who, despite credible accusations of assault from Christine Blasey Ford, threw a temper tantrum as he was being questioned, as if it was everyone else's fault that he should be held accountable for his own actions. This whole two-week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit fueled with apparent pent-up anger about President Trump and the 2016 election, fear that has been unfairly stoked about my judicial record, revenge on behalf of the Clintons, and millions of dollars in money from outside left-wing opposition groups. This is a circus. The consequences will extend long past my nomination. 
Many of us went along in the yearbook to the point of absurdity. This past week, my friends and I have cringed. when we read about it and talked to each other. <sighs> One thing in particular we're sad about. One of our good One of our good female friends who we would admire and went to dances with had her name used on the yearbook page with the term alumnus. That yearbook re reference was clumsily intended to show affection and that she was one of us. But in this circus, the media has interpreted the term as related to sex. It was not related to sex. This might be hard to believe, but I'm old enough to remember when Republicans actually referred to themselves as the party of personal responsibility. So while it's uncertain as to whether Van Dyke will be confirmed or not, what is certain is that the blame will, per usual, lie with Republicans if he does, because they've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're willing to dismantle every tenet of our democracy to compromise the integrity of entire branches of government to achieve their political ends. And if it means they have to cry and scream to do just that, that's exactly what they're willing to do.